What's up you guys? Welcome back to another video. Um, we got a fly tying video today. Very fun one. Um, some people are going to argue and act like and say this isn't a fly. Uh, but, in my opinion, if you ever use pre-weighted hooks or even like dumbbell eyes or anything on your flies, it's just as much of a fly. We're tying a jig sculpin streamer. I'll give you a close up once I start tying it. But, um, super deadly fly. Um, and I'm kind of picky about the flies that I tie like this because of the fact that these do sink very fast, first of all. So it's a really good fly to get down deep. Most importantly though, um, the swim patterns that Sculpin have, they're not, what would it be? They're not horizontal swimmers. They don't just sit in one part of the column and just chill there, unless you count the bottom of the column as being there. And if you ever watch them when they're getting ripped around in current, they're shooting up and down, up and down. They actually have these big pec fins so they can turn them down and it planes them straight into the rocks so they can stick to the rocks and not have to worry about it. So they can be in pretty turbulent water. But the way that they swim is more vertical as opposed to just like in a straight line horizontally. So this is a really deadly way to tie this presentation wise because it swims the exact way that the sculpin do. So we're gonna be tying some of these. Um, I gotta give my buddy Mel a shout out real quick. This is his piece of art. This is an original. This is gonna be in the backdrop of all my tying videos because I freaking love it. It's a uh, big sockeye salmon. This is a five piece panel print. It's not a print, it's the original, but it's a five piece panel. I think it's an absolutely gorgeous piece of art. Um, he gave it to me and was like, dude, yeah, you should do whatever you want with it. And I was like, well, I'm gonna definitely put this in my videos because I think it's awesome. And that kind of ties my little tying area. Bought this desk yesterday, $10, Facebook Marketplace, including the chair. Big things, guys, big things <laughs> come in. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. Let's get tie in. All right, you guys. So this is the fly itself. As you can see, it's not a huge fly. It's about three inches long. We have a white uh, chenille, pearl chenille belly, some uh, marabou plumes, and then rabbit strip. It's a very simple bug, but super effective, and you can see it's very clearly on a jig head. So. Let's, uh, let's get tying and I'll show you guys kind of the process here and the logic behind this fly. So we're gonna start off, and again, I'm not using anything fancy. These are literally eagle clawed ball heads. Um, and I've come, I've actually kind of learned now that you kind of want these heads to be, a little, the, the hooks to not be the best. Cause then you can bend them out when you, if you snag these flies up. Um, I always crimp the barbs on my hook, always, just cause Especially if you're casting this fly. Um, not the most fun fly to get hit in the face with or the back of the head. I can tell you from experience, that at 80 miles an hour sucks. Okay, so uh, most sculpin have a small uh, light belly. Uh, usually almost pearl in color, white, very, very light in color. Just hooks attached to this at all points, there we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just wrap a nice little thread base here. And that's solely because I'm going to be tying in some uh, polar chenille on the back. And you'll see this is, this is a three material fly. Like if you could see my desk, you'd be like, whoa. Okay, so all we're gonna do, tie in our chenille. Just like so, Oop. there you go. Just like so. The tie-in doesn't have to be pretty. And then to jump this, you just gotta pinch your pinch your thread like that. And so we're just gonna wrap this chenille up with each wrap, we're gonna print it backwards just so that we're not trapping any fibers. So there you go. Just like that. And I don't wrap this too far up. The body that is typically right around right where I stop because you don't want to overcrowd this head because we're gonna add a few more materials just to make this all nice and pretty. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna take some. This is olive grizzly marabou. And these are little plumes. Um, typically, you're pretty selective when you when you use these uh, little plumes for flies, which is nice because then you get left with these kind of janky little 
less than ideal pieces that you really can't do a whole lot with except for tail. So the beauty of these babies is you can use these to tie in your pectoral fins. And the nice thing too about this plume right here is, or the Estaz is what it is, it's not chenille, it's Estaz, um, right here on the back of this is it forces these babies out. So we're gonna do one more, same thing. Can't really use this piece for that much, so I'm gonna use it for this. You don't wanna have too many fibers, it gets kinda of skiwampus on you. And basically you can tie this in, and I'll turn this so you can see it, tie it in and then basically you can just pull it to the appropriate length. And this other one has a little bit more flair to it, but all we're really doing here is kind of going for profile. So that's that's plenty fine right there. Okay. Okay. Cut that. And now I'm gonna remove this from the hook. I'm gonna basically take this off the hook and then we're gonna put some olive barred um, rabbit strip on it. So again, very easy, easy fly. The majority of the body is actually just gonna be this. Um, so basically I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to, we'll do this so you guys can see. Take this off and I'm gonna measure out how long I want this. I want it about yay long. Yeah, that looks good to me. So where that needs to be stabbed is right around here. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna basically pull this, these fibers away like so. And stab it straight through like that. I'm gonna pull it down here. And the key to this too is once you have this in here, right here, you wanna pull this tight because as this thing gets wet and dries and wet and dries, this is leather. And so basically it'll stretch and, and tighten, stretch and tighten. So if this isn't tight, when you tie it in, it will come off and basically leave your fly looking kind of weird. So I'm gonna take this now. I'm gonna measure this out. I like that right there. And again, while I tie this in, I'm gonna be pulling tight. Like so, like this. Nice and tight. I'm gonna pinch it with my finger. Be careful not to trap too many fibers. You don't want it looking too gnarly. There you go. Pull that tight. Lost a little bit of fiber, that's okay. I'm not worried about that. And then typically what I'll do here, I will take some olive semi seal. Somehow this lost the little uh, label on it. And basically just to make this look not ugly, I'm gonna put a dubbing noodle of this onto thread. I'm gonna wrap this as a collar basically to cover up any of my loose thread wraps or any of that stuff. And you wanna apply this pretty sparingly and just do a longer noodle as opposed to using a lot of dub in a smaller piece because then you just lose it all at some point when you're fishing the fly, it just doesn't look that good. So I'm gonna take this dubbing noodle like so. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this right here to cover up any imperfections in my, uh, just like that. And then I'm gonna whip finish. So, I'll do one more just for safety. And that's it. So when you take this off the vise, you'll see very clear sculpin taper on the body. Again, you have a nice thick upper front, and if you ever see a sculpin, 85% like of their body is in right here, and then the rest is just this long skinny tail. So we got a nice thick head, and you can use black. If you want to time in white, uh, you can time in white, brown, so, so if you want to repaint them, you can. I don't personally see the benefit in that. Um, I mean, I understand that it looks more natural, but Again, we're, we're using this as a profile more so than the color. So that's the. All right, you guys. Hope you like that. Um, so again, super deadly fly. Appreciate you all watching and sticking with me here. Like I said, we're going to be cranking out quite a bit more content. And so, uh, yeah, this is the start first of a lot. And uh, I have a really, really fun tying series um, coming up. I'm going to run it by you and let me know in the comments what you think. Um, it's going to be 
me trying to tie the hyper realistic flies that you see on Instagram. So like Jason and all those guys that tie just like insanely realistic looking flies. I'm gonna try and tie them with regular materials. Like what I got in my tying area is what I'm gonna try and use. And I'm gonna try my best to make it look well. I'm a good fly tire. I don't mean to sound pompous when I say that, but I, I can tie basically any fly I need to. But I've never tied a fly that looks like an actual canister, that looks like a mayfly or whatever the hell he ties them to look like, you know, in certain scenarios. So um, we're gonna try and tackle some of those gnarly flies and hopefully be able to break them down enough just looking at them to make it happen. But leave a comment below if that's something you want to see. If you're like Andrew, we don't want to see you suck at tying really hyper realistic flies. Comment that, say, Andrew, I don't want to see that crap. So, but if you do, oh boy, you're in luck. So, thanks again, you guys, and uh, see you guys next week.